what is going on everyone welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be talking about something that's not as much of a glamorous topic but super important and that is swift documentation so here we are on a ns hipster page that goes over all the formatting of different types of documentation available to you uh, documentation in line in your code directly i'm not going to bore everyone to read through all of this but there is certainly quite a few different things available and they are super handy, especially in professional projects and projects that you wanna make sure are well built, easy to understand and scalable. So we're gonna get into some examples and talk about some cool little, little Xcode tricks to uh, you know, automatically also generate some of these documentation strings. So that said, don't forget to smash the like button as always. Hit that subscribe button if you're a returning viewer. Get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's talk about some documentation strings. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition, to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and we're actually gonna be working in a playground instead of a project. So I'm gonna come up here to file, new, and we're gonna select playground. We can stick with a blank playground and I'm gonna go ahead and call this Swift Docs, save it on our desktop. And let me expand this guy to give ourselves some more room to work. Let's also bump up the font size. So there's actually two main things that I'd like to go over. And one is uh, markers. And the second thing is documentation strings. So for markers, let's go ahead and create a basic view controller, which every single app out there is going to have, assuming you're not using SwiftUI, but if you are using SwiftUI, this still applies to you. So let's say we have a standard view controller in here. Let's say we have things like view did load, all of our you know, basic view methods. And then we also have functions that are, let's say, button actions. So like did, tap, done, uh, et cetera, et cetera. How do we go about separating our code to make sure it's nice and clean, uh, you know, e even if we try to keep our view controllers nice and small? So that's where markers come into the mix. So markers are a special kind of comment. There's uh, three that I'll talk about here. The most common one is mark, and you can say things uh, like like this. And if you notice, this marker actually made a line. It's kind of subtle. Hopefully y'all can see it. Uh, and it actually provided a separator in this file. And in Xcode, what you can now do is in this file, you can quickly jump between the different sections. So here we are uh, in sources. We can actually see it here. I'm not sure if it's going to actually pop up in the playground now that I think about it. See if we can get it to pop up. Looks like it, we won't. But in an actual application, what, what happened here is the drop down menu for the file in a project, you would see a way to jump to the file where this marker is. So you can cleanly organize your code. Let's say you have a table view and you have table view related functions and then actions, things of that nature. This mark statement is super helpful. So similarly, as you're developing your application, let's say we create a function of uh, do something. And let's say we're, uh, you know, like iteratively developing our app and we first want to develop one feature and we plan on coming back to this, but we've included the function as we started developing. So we can actually add uh, two different kind of marks in here. The first one is fix me needs to be implemented. And what you can actually do is you can also uh, look around your project to see if there's any fix me's. Similarly, what you can also do is you can add a to do comment. And the to do can be uh, basically any string that you want. We put update here. And these are the three main ones. Let me just copy and paste that other one as well so y'all can see it. 
These are the three most common types of these marker style statements for to do and fix me and mark that are very commonly used, especially in professional projects. The main notion here is organization and conveying intent of whoever wrote the code. The next thing is something which is extremely useful as well. And this is something that uh, you should really consider if you want to open source your code or you want other people to understand what a particular uh, function is doing. And that is doc strings. So let me go ahead and create a function on here of fetch user profile. And let's say it takes in a user ID, a name, and it also has a completion handler, which returns a Boolean and void. We're not gonna actually implement this function, but a cool thing that I'll call out here is you can actually hold, uh, let's see, command and option. And if you hit backslash, if you take a look at that, it actually stubs out this documentation for you. So let's actually fill this in and see why this format is important and what benefit it gives us. So the first thing is a description here. So we're gonna say, fetch a given user profile. The user ID is the ID of given user, name of user, and we'll say callback with true or false. And if you actually take a look now, and when you start to go and type this function out to call it, so in this case, we'll do an view to load, we'll say fetch user, you can actually see here that you get the description here. And you can also now jump to uh, the definition quite easily and see that documentation string. And what's more powerful about this is there's a bunch of tools out there that are open source and free where you can actually generate full documentation markup or website based on this information. Uh, you know, it goes without saying also that reading this from a developer perspective is super helpful too. So let's say there's multiple developers working on one project. From this, I can clearly understand what the heck this function is doing, what each of these parameters are expecting, so on and so forth. So let's do uh, two more examples of this really quickly, just to see two other things you can do. Uh, so let's say do another thing. And let's say this returns a, uh, I don't know, let's say an int optional. And let's go ahead and you can type out this doc string yourself as well, but obviously it's a little more tedious to do that. So command option slash it is. So notice that we can also uh, get return statements in here. You can have parameters and returns. They're not mutually exclusive. And let's also do one more. This one is not as common because most functions don't actually uh, throw. But let's say if we had a function that throws, whoops, we can go ahead and do it one more time here. So command option backslash. And you can see here, similar to parameters and return above, we can also specify uh, what exceptions and what errors it throws just like that. And obviously for the sake of this video and time, I'm shorthanding this, please write actual descriptions that are useful. Otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose of this and you're better off just not having anything. Uh, I always like to say, these return nil here. I always like to say that no documentation is better than wrong and inaccurate documentation. So uh, definitely try to remember that as a virtue. So that's basically it. That is the uh, summary of the things that I wanted to share. Um, before I uh, wrap up this video, some closing thoughts. A lot of people overlook documentation and writing, you know, like these functions and doc strings, and they don't only apply to functions. You can actually, in fact, uh, write them for classes themselves uh, and things of that nature. And I, I think while it's true that it might be tedious and repetitive, and it might not make sense for your project, when you start developing professionally, even if it's for personal apps, when you go to update an app that's, let's say like two years old, it's very helpful to know what you wrote two years ago. And I can really speak from experience of, um, you know, before Swift was even a thing, uh, there's a similar concept in Objective-C. Uh, and when I would go to update some of my old apps that were written, let's say like seven, eight, nine years ago, sometimes I would read the code and I would just 
want to pull my hair out because I had no idea what certain functions were doing and I would have to go look through tons of code. And, you know, I think that was a bit of a miss on my part of your functions that hopefully make sense in their own naming scheme, but having documentation would definitely help the case. So that said, I'm not going to bore you guys anymore with this stuff. Make sure you hit the like button if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe if you found the video useful and want to see more daily Swift uploads. Uh, I'm also working day and night on my TikTok course. So I'm super, super excited that that's coming along very nicely. It's the longest and most, most in-depth course that I've ever done. Stay tuned to see that. Leave a comment down below with any questions or feedback. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.